the Jigsaw. Today we're going to talk about how you can make better use of this tool that you've got a love-hate relationship with. Hi folks, well, if you're anything like me, you've got a bit of a rough history with your jigsaw. But today, I'm gonna to give you a few tips and tricks that might help you get past that uh, previous relationship that you had with your jigsaw, and uh, maybe show you a few things that'll uh, prove to you that it actually is a very effective tool in your workshop. So let's take a minute and just run over some of the design features of the Jigsaw just to give you a better idea of how it operates. Uh, my particular one has a few different options on it. Um, the first one is that there's an on-off switch here with a lock button right above it so that if you are doing a long continuous cut, you can lock it into place. Mine also has a variable speed control on the top here and that will come in handy when you're doing different materials and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Now, the bottom of the jigsaw is called the shoe. This is the shoe here. And the shoe really is designed to ride flat against the material that you're cutting while the blade cuts up and down in the material that you're cutting. Now, this particular uh, jigsaw has the option to tilt your uh, shoe at 15, 30, or 45 degrees, and so that actually will give you uh, some bevel cuts as you're uh, needing them in some different cuts. Okay, so I thought we'd take a minute and just talk about the actual jigsaw blades. Um, in the past, the common blade was what they used to call a U-blade. And obviously it's because of the U that's at the top of the blade. That would just fit into a collet on your jigsaw and then you would just take a screwdriver and tighten it down. Didn't always stay fast and it wasn't the greatest way to uh, have your jigsaw blade in, in the actual jigsaw. So they came out with a new type of blade which is called a T-blade. And this is much better because it actually you can see these two prongs that stick out here. Well, those two prongs actually get locked into the collet on your jigsaw and holds it in place much, much better. It also is much more uh, accepted in these new jigsaws which have the quick uh, release mechanisms in them, like mine does. When it comes to blades, you also want to make sure that you're getting the right blade for the application that you're going to be using it in. And by that I mean, you know, if you're cutting plywood, if you're going to be cutting uh, rough cut uh, dimensional lumber, if you're maybe making charcuterie boards like I do and cutting walnut, that's a different blade that you'll want to be using there. There are blades that are made for metals. There are blades made for cutting tiles. There are flush cutting blades. There are all kinds of blades out there. You just have to just check out at your hardware store make the determination about what you're cutting and how you want to make the cuts. And so just again, uh, make sure that you're using the right blade for the right application. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to talk about with blades is uh, how the blade works with your actual work surface. Because um, in my experience, there's two, two basic kinds. One would be where the teeth cut on the upstroke, and one would be where the teeth cut on the downstroke. So make sure you know which one you're getting when you buy it, because it will make a difference as to which way you have your wood situated. And the reason I say that is, when you've got a blade that's cutting on the upstroke, it's going to want to tear the fibers as it comes back up. And so it will leave your top surface a little bit rougher. Make sense? Same with if you have a down cutting blade, it will want to tear the fibers as it goes down, leaving the bottom side of your workpiece a little bit rougher. 
Now we know that there's a wide variety of blades. We know that you have to fit the blade to the purpose. So make sure you're using a plastics blade if you're cutting PVC or plastic. Make sure you're using a metal blade if you're cutting metal. We know that there's rough cutting blades. We know that there's fine cutting blades. But the thing about it is all that talk about blades doesn't really mean anything if you don't see it in action. So I thought what we would do is just try to uh, make a few cuts in some different types of wood. So I've got some plywood, uh, some two by fours. Uh, so I'll cut, make a couple of different cuts in two by fours and then also some solid wood. I've got some hard maple here. I thought we would try to cut through that as well. So what I've discovered is that there are four basic cuts that I do all the time with my jigsaw. The first one is really just rough cuts on dimensional lumber. Things like cutting the ends off of a two by four to cut them to length. The problem with that is, as you can see, it leaves a very rough edge. Second cut is I make a lot of solid wood charcuterie boards and so I end up cutting a lot of these hardwoods. And what I've discovered is that uh, you can use a fairly simple blade, but you just want to slow your feed rate down. The most common cut, and the one that I think most people would say they do, is these curves on a jigsaw. And those are really where the jigsaw shines. It's an excellent way to cut curves for sure. And then of course, one thing that the jigsaw can do very well that hardly any other tool can do would be to cut a hole in you know, the middle of something. Like in this case, really it's that simple. You drill holes in the corners and the jigsaw will just take care of the rest for you. And you can just go around the outline like I am here. You can go cross like a lot of people will do is make an X. But uh, again, really handy way to make a quick hole in the, in the middle of something. All right, so it's actually, this is my favorite time of these videos where I get to talk about some of my favorite tips and tricks. And so this, uh, this actually is probably my favorite tip of all. And it's actually a very simple one. Really all it takes is a utility knife and a straight edge of some variety. And so if I know that I'm going to be making a straight cut, whether it's in plywood or even in uh, some of the solid uh, woods, not so much in the hardwoods, but more on the, you know, the pines, the poplars, uh, even some of the soft maples, uh, what I'll actually do is uh, take my utility knife and my straight edge and I'll actually score a line, I'll actually cut the top layer of fibers on my workpiece. And what that will do is it actually relieves the pressure in the wood so that when that blade comes up on the upstroke, it doesn't tear out those fibers anywhere near uh, as badly as it would if there weren't um, a score line there already. So that's my number one trick. Second trick. Uh, something that I do almost regularly, and I, I'll actually combine this with the first trick of scoring the line. Uh, what you'll want to do is take some uh, packing tape or some painter's tape and just put it right over top of your line. And then just uh, go right ahead and saw right through the tape. And that actually will give you an even cleaner cut, especially if you do combine it with uh, scoring the line ahead of time. So, uh, pretty simple. I like to use packing tape uh, because it tends to stick to the fibers quite well and I can see through it where, so I can see my line. If you're going to use painter's tape, I would recommend you actually put another line on top of the painter's tape so you know where you're cutting. The third thing that I want to talk about now is the speed of your cuts. And this is a critical one because the speed really makes a difference in terms of burning your workpiece, as well as making sure that you have a nice straight cut all the way around. What happens is your blade is not uh, uh, very well secured, obviously, on this bottom end. And so there's a fair amount of deflection on the bottom of the blade. And so if you're putting pressure on that blade as you're going around a corner, you can see how it wants to come out of square 
and actually you can you can make quite a bevel cut as you're going around a corner or even if you're going straight but you're trying to force your saw so the trick there is to not go faster than your blade will allow and you'll know it you'll know if you're forcing it because your blade will actually feel like it's trying to push the front of your jigsaw down so use the right speed for the right cut if you're uh, if you're working with softer woods again pine uh, lots of the plywoods some of those woods they will actually allow you to go a little bit faster because their fibers are, are looser and uh, you know you can actually rip through those quite well but if you're working with a hardwood like a maple it's it's really critical that you actually slow your cut right down and uh, you can slow your cut down you'll also want to slow your blade down a little bit and uh, maybe refer to your manual to find out where they recommend you refer or you uh, you slow your speed down to but uh, definitely slow your slow your cut as well as slow your speed and that will give you a much cleaner cut again okay so now you're a jigsaw expert well at least you'll feel more confident in using it uh, in more situations uh, so thanks so much you guys I really appreciate uh, you hanging around here this long if you found this video useful if you like what I'm doing here please give me a thumbs up it really helps with the with the YouTube knowing what I'm doing and uh, also subscribe to my channel let me know if I did a good job on this one. Let me know if I missed out. Let me know if you really found any of these tips useful. I think you will, especially with the uh, scoring the line and using the packing tape. I think those are very useful tips. Anyways, thanks you guys. Have a great day. We'll talk to you really soon.